Before we talk about the amount function and the accumulation function, we want to just define some simple terms. So the first one is principal. This is going to be your initial deposit or loan. You can think of this as the present value of your money at a given time. And the accumulated value is going to be the total amount that's paid back after some period of time, whatever we uh, say that that period of time is. So we can think of this as the future value. So in general, the interest is going to be your accumulated value minus your principal. So in other words, how much did you gain over that period of time? So we will define our deposits as P0, so our principal at time 0. This will be our present value, and whatever time we pick later is the future value. So another way of thinking about interest earned is just FB minus PV, or future value minus present value. So we deposit $300, which accumulates to $325.12 after a year. How much interest have we earned? Well, our future value is going to be $325.12, and we're subtracting our present value of $300, which is going to give us interest of $25.12. So this is how much we gained. But if we think about it from the bank's perspective, what happened in their end? Well, they lost $25.12 because they paid that interest to us. So uh, when we think about interest, we can think of it from different perspectives. If you're the company or bank giving out money, you're losing money on interest. And if you're a person investing, then you're gaining money on your interest. So the accumulation function, known as little a of t, is the future value of a $1 deposit after t years. So in other words, the amount of years is what we're putting into our accumulation function. So there's three important things about accumulation functions. One is that a of 0 is equal to 1. This means that when we put A and we don't, we just stick in money, we haven't accrued any interest yet, it is going to be $1. Uh, if we want to put in something that is not $1, then we have the amount function, which we'll talk about later, which will basically scale the accumulation function. The second point is that A of T is increasing. So this means that after a single year, if you put in money, it should increase. Now, if you're putting money today, you're not getting that much money back out of interest, um, but it should be increasing from year to year. And the last thing is that A of T, our accumulation function is continuous and differentiable. If you have a polynomial or an exponential function, you are good to go. So this is just some calculus stuff, but all polynomials uh, will be continuous and differentiable. So with simple interest, we'll see linear functions. With compound interest, uh, we'll see some functions with exponents. But in this case, they're all going to be continuous and differentiable. So here's an example question. Let's verify that a of t is equal to 4t squared plus 1 is an accumulation function. And then we'll determine the future value when t is equal to 4, given an initial deposit of $1. So let's first show that this is an accumulation function. So a of 0 should be equal to 1. So if we put in 0 for all of our t's, we're going to get 4 times 0 squared plus 1, which is just going to be 0 plus 1, which gets us 1. So yeah, uh, our first step is quite good. Now, the second one is asking, is it increasing? Well, to do this, we can just take the derivative of our function and then see what it's doing for values of t. So the derivative of 4t squared plus 1 is just going to be 8t. And we know that t is always going to be greater than or equal to 0. Uh, therefore, t will always be non-negative. Well, our derivative will always be non-negative. So it's basically always going to be increasing, which is exactly what we want. Now, the third one says that we need to verify that it's uh, differentiable and continuous. Well, it's a polynomial. so. We just have 4t squared plus 1, therefore it's going to be continuous and differentiable just based off calculus knowledge. Now, the second thing is asking, what is the future value when t is equal to 4? Okay, given an initial deposit of $1. Okay, so basically what we're doing here is we're just finding out what a of 4 is. So a of 4 is going to be 4 times 4 squared, putting 4 in for t plus 1, which 4 times 4 times 4 is just going to be 64 plus 1, which is going to be a total of $65. That is going to be our future value. This interest rate is insane. And if I could put in a dollar and get $65 back, I would be very happy, but that is very unrealistic. Now, our amount function 
is basically going to be our accumulation function scaled by our principal, in other words, our initial deposit. So the amount at times t is going to be our initial investment times the accumulation function. So accumulation function always starts with a $1 deposit. So this is basically going to be scaling your deposit up. Another way you can think about this is saying that the future value is equal to the present value times the accumulation function. It's just two ways of saying the same thing. Uh, I like to use the formulas a little bit more than using FB and PV, uh, just because it helps me. Well, personally, I, I understand that a little bit better. So, the effective rate of interest for a given period is the amount of money that one unit of principal earns during one period. So you can think about it as, let's say we want to find the interest rate in period one. Well, we're basically taking our accumulation function at time one and subtracting the accumulation function at time zero in order to get a difference, and that's going to be our interest rate. In other words, if we have $300 when t is equal to one, and we started with, uh, I don't know, like 250 at t is equal to zero, uh, then we could put those values in and we could find an interest rate. Now, alternatively, we can do this in terms of amount rates. So it's the amount at times one uh, at time one minus the amount at time zero, and we're gonna be dividing by the amount at time zero. So this is basically reducing to a ratio out of one if that makes sense. I think that's the best way to explain it. So the amount function is scaling your accumulation function. So we need to divide by the amount function basically to, to scale it backwards. And how we get from our first formula to our second formula is noting that a of t is equal to p of zero times little a of t. So if we do some division, then we would get big A of t over p zero is equal to little a of t. So it's the amount function scaled down by our principal investment, and that's equal to our accumulation function. So you can just do some algebra and you can get yourself there. So here is an example question. We have our formulas up there in case we need it, but a deposit of $300 earns $20 in interest at the end of one year. What is the effective annual interest rate? Okay, so uh, we're putting in $300 and then we're earning $20 in interest. So if we think about this in present value and future value, our, our P0 in this case is 300, and our accumulation function, sorry, our amount function at the end of one year is going to be $320. So what is the effective annual rate of interest? Okay, well, P0 is really just the same thing as saying, a zero because we haven't actually gained any more money at that point. So I one, which is after one year, is going to be the amount function at one minus the amount function at zero, all divided by the amount function at zero. So this is going to be $320 minus $300 all divided by $300, which gives us 20 over 300 which if we turn this into a decimal, it's going to be 0.66% repeating, which is effectively a 6.67% effective annual interest rate. So these were just some basic problems. In the next video, we're going to cover simple interest, but it's good to get an idea of what the amount functions and accumulation functions are. So that way, when you see them in simple interest and compound interest, you have a good understanding of what they actually mean behind the scenes.